I was working on this magical girl transformation scene and I thought that it would be a cool idea to add some lens flares. So let me show you how I did it. The first thing I did was drawing this cross center on frame. I'll use it as a reference. Then I proceeded to enable the keyframes for this layer and move it to the position I wanted. This automatically adds a keyframe on the current position of the timeline. Then I rotated to an angle I wanted and copied this layer and did the same for the rest of the fingers. From now you can see that it might be too many lens layers. And they definitely were too many, but that's a good part of using these shapes as reference layers. That way you can experiment quickly without thinking about it and correct anything you need. These flares are supposed to come up one after the other, so I just drag the layers in timeline to offset them, and this way they will appear in order. Now moving forward, I decide to rotate each cross respectively, and here you can visualize the idea I was going for. However, the rotations look too dull, and that's because they are moving at a constant rate. So I decided to create a keyframe close to the end part of the rotation and then shrink it to make the first part of the movement quicker. This will give us a quick rotation and then ease into the rest of the frames. This looks a lot better, but how we say before, it is way too many lines appearing on the screen. So I decided to disable some of these flares and just leave three. That would be enough. The movement isn't perfect, so I just stretched it and adjusted each layer until I found it to be good enough. Now we have our reference ready and we can proceed to draw the flares. So I created a white layer and then reduced its opacity to be able to draw on top of it all more easily. Then I created an animation folder and started using the special ruler to draw the rays in the same direction as the cross. However, we need to add more parts to this effect, so the best way to do this is to click on this layer and then select Create Folder and Insert Layer. And with this we have the ability to draw several layers on the same frame for the same animation folder. It makes things a lot easier. So with a circular ruler I create a big solid circle right in the middle and then with another layer I create another circle way far away. This will be expanding and changing with each frame. So in the second layer, I rotate the rays and expand the flares respectively. You can also choose to rotate the semicircles to give another dimension to the movement. And now, because the center is open, it is better to redraw the origin of the rays to not cross themselves. Now we do this for the rest of the frames, one by one. And just remember that in the final frames, of this animation, everything is gonna slow down. So you expand these circles to a lesser degree and they become thinner and thinner. After finishing, this is how it looks. And it is good enough for now. So I took this folder and painted a white layer on top of it and clipped this layer to change the color on the entire flare. And here's the final result along with the hand animation. So this is the basic idea. From this, we can proceed to the rest of the flares the same way, creating small variations in shape and movement. Now the only part that is left to do is to add a glow effect. There are flares and they're not shining, so let's fix that. The basic principle of a glow effect consists in three parts. First, we duplicate the shape we want. Second, we change the blending mode to add. And third, we blur the shape. That way we get that diffuse effect around it. So to make things easier for the way we are working, we should copy every animation folder we already drew. And then we proceed to merge every element that is separated on each frame. Once we are done, we can change the blending mode to add on each animation folder. And we can change the color of the animation folder by clipping a new layer on top. Then we proceed to select the corresponding layer. We click on Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and adjust accordingly. For this animation specifically, 
and the size of the canvas. 200 worked really well, but it is different in each case. So I did this for every layer and every folder, changing the color of the last flare just to add some variation. And here is the final result. This is just a simple example, but the same idea applies to more complex animations. I hope some of this was useful. You can find my social media down below and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.